sign a handout from a public comment speaker that Ron just gave us something. Okay. Ron, have you got another packet? Yes. Uh, Mr. Pill. Commissioner uh, Pilgrim just showed, just made it. And I don't know if you've. Well, it says six o'clock, so I'm surprised we've got a big crowd tonight. So we'll. Uh, Hopefully keep this meeting relatively short, but uh, we welcome you at any rate and uh, look forward to your comments. Um, but with that, let me call the meeting to order. And um, first item is the agenda. And each of you have received this agenda. And are there any changes or modifications that you care to make? If not, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion to approve as presented. Second. All in favor? OK. So we have an agenda. And the first item on the agenda is minutes from our last meeting. And again, I think you all have a copy of the minutes. Are there any changes or comments that you would make to our minutes? Uh, Mr. Chairman, on um, <clears throat> the minutes of September 7th, yes. um, the item regarding RA0721, um, there's a last paragraph there that said uh, the commission did not feel the application had adequate information and Commissioner Pilgrim moved to table this item for 30 days in order to seek clarification. Now, I didn't see a specific reference to this information being included in the package to clear this objection. Do you, did anybody see that? I mean, is there proof that we have that requested information in the package now? Mac, did you see it? I did not. Um, I see what you're talking about. I saw to see the, uh, with regards to the, the ineligibility. Uh, I don't know if that's been addressed on the the board application. I'd have, may have to ask Mr. Johnson about that. You know, when we ask for something like that, um, yeah. Ron, I, 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 I don't know how you would do it, but somehow or another, you know, point out that this was requested in the previous meeting, and and uh, here is the uh, compliance with that request. I had to do with residency requirements. Hold on one moment. It's a uh, page, the last page of the. Do you have the? Uh, you want to see it, Ron? You can look at mine. Um, Sorry, am I reading these too closely? No, no, I'm glad. Do you, Mr. Chair? Yes. Do you mind if I approach? Oh, no, Thanks. that's fine. And what page was that? It would be 07. the last page of the one with the agenda on it, Ron. Sure, sure. Subsection Rabo F. Right, correct. So, um, as a part of your as a part of your packet, um, there was two applications that were, um, and, and we only received two applications um, for the hearing. Um, it's, so they should have been included in your in, inside of your uh, your packets, but there were two applicants for that position. Very well. There were yes. Um, may I have a, a motion? Can we approve these minutes uh, as? Written. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second that one. All in favor? Okay. It's been 30 days. Okay. That's done. 
All right. Next item on the agenda is new business. I'll run. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a little more trouble. Um, I have a this uh, application for preliminary plat approval from LGI, and I have a plat attached for um, it's got a plat attached for Connor's Landing and. Then it has another one that's that's not uh, particularly labeled. I don't know for certain that it's uh, uh, it doesn't show a boundary to a um, to a street or thoroughfare. It just says that it's touched on uh, one end on the south end of the property by Grady Knight Industrial Court. That has nothing to do with this plot. Well, I didn't. Sign. I couldn't find out where it did. It goes with the uh, the other material to follow. That's not part of the LGI. Oh, no. all right. So this, but this doesn't go with the uh, Fuqua stuff, does it? Yes. Yes. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Sorry. Again, Ron, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, Commissioners. Uh, Application uh, plat-04-21 is uh, a continuation from our last public hearing uh, on this item. Uh, if you recall, um, this was a new uh, a segment of uh, the off of Connors Road uh, within the Mirror Lake uh, Master Plan area. Uh, the applicant is LGI Homes, Georgia LLC, from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, they're proposing a, uh, a subdivision with a total of 194 Six. homes, I believe it is. 196. 196 right. homes, excuse me. And they're here to uh, continue on with their testimony um, on this item. Uh, the commission at the last hearing uh, requested some information from the applicant in regards to traffic. Uh, they, we, I believe one of the commissioners asked for traffic, one uh, asked for some clarification on uh, the application, being that it uh, was not signed, and uh, there was additional uh, request for, uh, uh, for clarification on who owns the southernmost portions of the parcel where the uh, easement is uh, located, or where it's at least shown on the site plan. Um, I can report that uh, they have submitted a signed, uh, submitted a signed application. They have uh, discussed uh, with us the ownership of the easement area. It is confirmed that it is owned by LGI, um, and all three of the parcels are owned uh, by LGI. So the uh, single application for the three parcels is valid. And uh, there's no other uh, hiccups, at least from a technical standpoint, that we could find with the uh, plat application. Well, I, I have a concern. We tabled this at the last meeting for the lack of information. And this package is identical to what we received at the last meeting, except when we walked in tonight, uh, we were handed a traffic study that goes with this. Um, so again, I don't, I don't see until we review this uh, traffic study I don't see we have any more information than we had last month. You should have received a signed application as well. Um, um, was not in my packet. Did you, anybody else receive Was that electronic or a, a hard copy? Uh, it would have been, we do an electronic packet, but there's hard copies um, that are submitted as well to you. We would have had the same information. <clears throat> <laughs> Well, again, um, is there anything new besides this traffic study that uh, we are to consider? There is no other new information. Um, well, what, any comments that any of the other commissioners have about this? Uh, I have a concern that I have not had a chance to read this traffic study, uh, so I don't know what it says. Um, it was received today around 4 p.m. 
on a related topic, let me ask you something, Ron. How do you feel about receiving information uh, to modify or um, amplify an, an application we have in here for consideration and receiving that information an hour or two before the meeting starts? Um, well, um, it's not, it's not like it's, um, not customary to receive. We have received that in the past plenty of times. Um, mm -hmm. it's not, um, something that we, uh, that we would like, of course. Um, it is a traffic memo. There's some, uh, there's a lot of technical, um, analysis that goes into that. So I can understand that it may take a while, um, to actually get that. Um, if it was a full-fledged traffic study like what we saw with uh, 450 Edge Road, for example, um, that would have took even longer um, to accomplish. Um, so I think they were really working up against the clock. Um, but I guess from a, to, to answer your question from a staff's perspective, uh, of, of course we want to get our information in enough time in order for the commission to give a, a proper decision. And that you can get it on to us. Right. right. If you get it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, You've got to retransmit that information to all of us. Um, well, and we've had several I I instances of pretty significant information, more than a traffic study. I mean, well, let me say this to you. When, we, when you send out a package, sure, sure. Um, and we typically get it late Thursday afternoon or on Friday sometime, um, and we sit down and we read the package and analyze it and uh, kind of go through it, make notes. And, and, um, and most times we get out and ride around, ride the property, look at it, and make sure that we kind of understand what's in the application. But if we've done all of that, and then we get a major modification to that application package, then all the work we've done up until that point may be completely moot and a waste of time because this new package is going to modify all of that. Now, I haven't discussed this with the other commissioners, but for my part, I don't, um, I don't think that's the way to do business. I think, uh, I don't think it's uh, professional on our part. The gentleman back here has got a comment. So when I get through, that we get, but, uh, but I wanted to ask the other members of the commission too, how do you feel about, after you've already spent time, you know, a day or so going through the packages and understanding them and writing notes on them, <clears throat> uh, do you think it's uh, a good thing to entertain new information and then try to hurry it up and get it in here to make a decision on? Or do we need to set a deadline like five days or a week before the meeting to get our full package in hand and then just say if you've got new information to be considered uh, bring it in and we'll uh, put this discussion of this item off till the next meeting I would have to agree with you it is kind of I mean I do even though I run a business of married I got kids uh, Matt could you use the phone is it not coming through I'm sorry turn it on and I, I mean, I do read these amongst all the other stuff I read my, for my office, my work, and I do visit. I mean, I drive out there and look at it. Um, and I try to talk to people that I know uh, that may be affected by it, that live in the neighborhood, and I try to figure out what it is they want done or don't want done. So I do put some time into it. I mean, it, uh, it's a volunteer job, but we do take it serious. Um, yeah, and kind of the last minute filings. I mean, I know in my line of work, last minute filings are frowned upon. Uh, and uh, courts don't like that. Judges don't like last-minute filings. They generally like to know what's coming. Uh, so I, I, I would, I don't mind us. Maybe this may be something we have to take up secondarily or, or through the through the uh, council. But I think maybe we should put a deadline on that. That if we ask for things, we may ask for them at least five days in advance or seven days in advance. And that's not a bad idea because we're making this decision. I mean, this is millions of dollars uh, of, of money that's going to be spent. It's going to affect thousands of people. So I think, you know, five days is not too much to ask mm -hmm. to have it in, you know, beforehand. The city also has um, professionals here as well. We have uh, the city engineer here um, that might be able to... Uh, I'm sorry, the who? City engineer. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. 
the city engineers here as well, uh, he might be able to uh, give you guys some insight into this traffic study. Uh, he has reviewed it. Um, so, uh, well, Ron, don't get me wrong. This is not just about that. We've had multiple experiences of this over time, and uh, I'm just saying it's kind of gotten to the point where it's not this issue particularly, but the fact that it seems to be getting more and more commonplace. And I think we as a body need time to give uh, serious due consideration to a submission and make sure that we understand it. Uh, Dave, do you have any comments? I, I agree with Commissioner Flowers. Um, it really just seems to be happening recently. Uh, you know, yeah. Months ago, we were not having this problem, but um, whether it's because we're short of staff, whatever, I don't know. There's been a lot of pressure on the city uh, and on the staff um, with all of the things that are going on. Um, and maybe that's a problem, maybe that's an issue. But again, for us to make decisions on material that we really have had no chance to review, uh, because I do, I'd like to go around and visit these sites that are to be considered on the agenda and talk to people in the area if it's appropriate. Um, so it is hard to do if we get last minute information. Um, but that being said, um, what's the, what, what's your approach on, on this uh, material for this particular sure. item? So, um, well, like I said, the, uh, we do have our engineer that might be able to give a little bit more background. Um, but I guess to address some of the points here, um, I can attest that it is absolutely not a staff related issue. Um, this is totally not staff related. Uh, we get information so frequently and um, changes to that information and things of that, of, of, of the like. Um, and we get it often and we get it just before meetings. We get it at meetings sometimes. We, um, but we have, as staff members, we have no choice but to give that information to you when we receive it. I understand. Um, so don't, you know, I, I guess I say this to say don't, uh, you know, don't frown on the, the staff in a, in a sense. We're really just kind of like your hands in this in a, in a sense and trying to give that information to you. Um, but we, we got to have to work with what we have. Um, so maybe there needs to be some sort of deadlines or something of that nature. Um, I know things are kind of moving fast, and I know that we have a lot of applications recently. Um, but in either case, we've, um, you know, Whitney and I, we've really um, tried to do our best in trying to get all of this information to you as soon as possible. Um, and oftentimes that comes with changes that may come later. Um, so um, we don't want to confuse anyone um, or anything like that, but we, we would much rather give it to you up front than not give it to you and um, you know uh, if it comes in at a later date pass a deadline i understand i understand and appreciate you know the effort of whitney and uh, you and John, that guy back uh, there wants to be um we're not ready yet okay um but back on on this uh sure this sure. material is there an alley road i mean it's shown prominently on this there's a Nally, there's a Nally Road right of way um, that's there. It's an unpaved road um, that's city owned, and it uh, there's a, currently a gate at Connors uh, at Connors Road where Nally would would uh, intersect. There's a stop sign there. <laughs> yeah, I believe there is a stop sign there. Yeah. It used to cross the railroad tracks a few years back, 15, 20 years ago. They blocked it. it used to be able to come off 78, go over the tracks, on the Nally. So yeah. we've got. Uh, 196 homes to be built with one apparent access and egress and all of the above. Yeah. Um, so is it covered in the traffic study. Yes, there, it is covered in the traffic study, um, including the traffic circle um, and movements there. Um, the as far as the two entrances, as we know, uh, two entrances would be required if it's 200 units or more. Um, so they're just under the 200 uh, by four units. So um, there was no requirement from the city to uh, have a second entrance, but the city does intend on keeping that right of way. 
Um, so this is a lot different than the first uh, application that they submitted in December. If you recall, uh, part of the Nally Road was proposed to be closed, uh, turned over. Uh, the city would, would basically get rid of the right of way. Um, and they were to utilize some of that space, but that's not the case in this current application. We're going to keep that Nally Road right away. And is the city to construct this, what looks like a traffic circle uh, at Nally Road? Is that going to be the city's responsibility or the developer? Um, I'd have to defer uh, to, to Bobby, uh, our community development director, um, on that. Well, it looks like it's road. Looks like this road A comes out to Connors Road uh, directly across from Enclave Drive, and that this intended to be a traffic circle right there. Developer is going to put that traffic circle in. Okay, so it's not the city. <laughs> yeah, that sign in blood. <laughs> it's part of their plat. They'll have to do it. Yes, they, they've agreed to do that. All right. Then, Bobby, does the city take over that maintenance of that traffic circle at that point? Or yeah, it become, it'll become a city street when they get it built, and it, the maintenance period's up. Yeah. Thank you. Now, this is a preliminary plat application, so there would be a lot more specifics and detail, presumably, to follow? Preliminary plat is, a, is the concept layout uh, it's pretty much to satisfy zoning, you know, density, setbacks, number of units. Um, the final plat is the plat of record that will come later. When all the roads are put in, all the everything's inspected, curbs, drainage, water, sewer, all of it. When all that's done, the, the final plat will go to city council. Speaking of that, it, it make sure I remember this one right, make sure I don't get confused. Is this one going to have sidewalks on both sides of the street? Um, I believe he's got them shown on both sides. On both sides of the street. Okay. Whitney, you can't blow that up any? I was making sure I was. Thank you. That's what Aaron, both sides? Number four. Number four. Yeah, I'll go. Um, Whitney, scroll down to the notes on the left at the bottom if you can. Yeah. Well, note number four does both indicate sides. that, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure I was reading it right. Yes. The when the developer gets around to actually constructing it, he'll do it based on this preliminary plat. Yes. And, and he's got to comply with things shown on this. On That's this. correct. Yes. All right. <laughs> and you'll be inspecting him the whole time to be yes. certain that he does. Absolutely. We're counting on you, Bobby. Are there any other this, this is no different than any other preliminary plan on a okay. residential development that we do. Any other comments that the commissioners have regarding this preliminary plan? Not right now. Thank you, sir. Um, staff, what is your recommendation? That this be approved or conditions? Uh, well, since we since this preliminary plan has already been conditioned to the twelfth power, it also includes all of the revised Mirror Lake Master Plan conditions that were added. They're added onto the plat. Um, staff would recommend approval. I mean, this this is probably the, one of the most straightforward preliminary plats that we've had. I will uh, comment briefly on the. This is not a full fledged traffic study. It's a traffic memorandum. Uh, it addresses just the development and what impact it's going to have on the adjacent roads. Um, I, I know you guys are not tra transportation engineers, and, and I know enough just about to be dangerous. Water resources is my, my field, but based on what this PE on page 4, uh, based on the analysis that he, he performed, the uh, impact on the adjacent roadways is going to be minimal. The traffic circle or roundabout um, that they volunteered from the very beginning um, will do more for this development than anything else. It's kind of hard to believe. Uh, they put in 196 homes directly across the street from, what is it, Liberty 
point or something, uh, also entering that same traffic circle. Hard to believe that it won't have some impact on the roundabout. Ownership. The roundabout will be grossly more efficient to move traffic from those two, the adjacent across the street and this development, than a four-way stop condition would be. Uh, you know, we at the city, uh, I'll speak for Mr. Barber, we love roundabouts. Uh, we like more of them. We, we've noticed that. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's, it's a proven fact. Georgia DOT is, uh, has championed those as far as uh, that versus a traffic signal. If you can do it, um, they move traffic a lot better. Been consideration for the impact of 196 homes on schools? Mr. Chairman, we, we, we can't, if, if, we, if we ask the school's permission before we approve any kind of development, we'll never do a, a development. Um, you know, we, it's going to have an impact, as, as is everything else in Mirror Lake, as it develops. Um, but this is not going to be part of the Mirror Lake. This will not be part of the Mirror Lake HOA. Then how are we going to hold them to the same standards that the rest of the Mirror Lake House has been held to? I mean, how, are we, how, are we going to, how are we going to hold them to the same standards going forward? Mirror Lake has held up fairly well. There's some neighborhoods that aren't great, but how are we going to hold them up if they're not part of the HOA? How are you going to enforce the rules against their neighbor, that you force against their neighbors against this, this neighborhood if they're not in the same HOA? Well, this, this development will have their own HOA and their own amenity package. That's going to be required. I wonder if it's not of the same ilk or if it's not of the same keeping as the Mirror Lake one. You're essentially allowing them to build in the Mirror Lake neighborhood, but you're not requiring them to keep the same Mirror Lake requirements. Looks like saying, hey, you can build a house. Doesn't seem you can build a 900-foot shack or you can build a 4,000-foot house. You, well, I, you is, know, it's, 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 you're not making the same requirements. I would think that the conditions that we have on this plat and the fact that we've got a uh, new zoning ordinance with architectural controls, um, the lots are a lot smaller than Mirror Lake, but the density is about twice. If my math's right, I ain't really good at math. It's yeah. about twice what Mirror Lake is. I mean, is that really? Because I mean, if you look at the master plan we had back in '18, the comprehensive plan, maintain existing small town ambiance is one of the plan highlights. It says represent citizens' ideas and concerns, maintain improve residents' quality of life. Residents, not new residents. Residents' quality of life. Encourage in order to efficient social and economic needs of surrounding areas. Those are things that are highlighted in our small in our comprehensive plan. I'm not sure how shoving 196 houses twice the density of its neighbors on this piece of property is in keeping with the plans of the comprehensive plan, which we voted for in 18, or was approved by the council in 18. The revised master plan on the other pods that are going to be inside the Mirror Lake HOA uh, will have two new amenity packages um, comparable to what Mirror Lake already has for the Mirror Lake HOA area. But these folks don't, do they? These folks will not be part of that. They're, got the, they're going to have their own. But this was a part of the original Mirror Lake plan, was it not? Wasn't this part of the original Mirror, Mirror Lake development? Not the original. It was, it was uh, annexed. The Probably amended. five years after the after the original Mayor the, Lake started. The amended, but they're not going to yeah. be required to be held to the same. That's my issue is that, I mean, the people who are there who invested money in their property there in Mayor Lake, I mean, I, I see why they're concerned with this, and that's what I, everybody I've talked to is concerned, is that what are they going to build, how many are they going to squeeze in, in there, and what's going to do to my property value? I mean, that's what they're concerned with, and rightfully so. I understand, but, but those numbers are already set. Can't change those. Mirror Lake Master Plan's already locked in. We don't have to vote for this. We can change that. That much we can't change. We can't change what's happened in the past, but we can change That's going forward. That's up to forward. you. But we can change going forward. My point is, we may have made mistakes in the past. Doesn't mean we have to make them again. I mean, just because we approved something prior doesn't mean we had to prove it again. I mean, we can, we can do better. Uh, and I think that's all we're asking for. It's just, we're not saying no development. At least I'm not. I'm just saying better. I want better. I want better for a community, I want better for the neighbors, I want better for the, again, uh -huh. as the master plan says, for the residents currently here in their, their lifestyle and, and, and their life. And that's what, that's what our comprehensive plan, which we work under, our own words, uh, improve residents' quality of life. And I'm not sure this does that. Don't worry, you'll get a chance. 
<laughs> you wore you didn't wear that tie for nothing. Do the uh, commissioners have any more comments to make to staff? Um, this requires a uh, yes a, public a hearing. hearing. Yeah. So if you're ready, then let's uh, open this up to uh, public hearing. If there's anybody that uh, is in favor of or opposed, please come forward. Give us your name, your address. Uh, you have three minutes. We'll talk real fast because of the three minutes. I've given packets, which I believe he's disseminated to you, that show my concerns. I'm Brenda Canop. I live at 8934 Connors Road, which is directly across from this development in unincorporated Douglas County, and I have residential agricultural zoning currently. So this would diametrically totally change my way of life. I would like to point out on the sidewalk issue, yes, the general notes do say five-foot sidewalks required on each side. But when you look at the st zoning stipulations for track four and five east that are on that very same planning form, number 12 says sidewalks, sidewalks will be provided throughout the development on at least one side of internal streets. So which one of those details is going to dictate the sidewalks in that subdivision? In your packet that I've provided you, you will see that they are using, to determine their 3.3 um, density, they are using figures based on a total acreage it gets really wonky. If you look at the 63.96 acres, which includes the falls, which is on the west side of Nally Road, those are going to have one house per half acre. There's 12 acres there. It's going to have 24 homes. On the east side, they're putting all of the rest of these homes, 172 of these homes on tracks four and five. And if you take out that lake buffer and that creek buffer, and the power line and the gas line, they lose 17 acres. So they should not be allowed to base all of their homes on the 51.38 acres. They need to deduct out the 14 acres on the east side that would then lower the density to an appropriate amount because you can see on the information that I've provided, one square acre, you can look at the detail that I've provided and it, you've got six homes per acre there because they can't develop all of that property. And they're using the totality of that property. I've also included in the packet that I gave you the information from the tax office that shows when all of this property was pur purchased by JLC, which has been just in the last several years. They knew these things existed when they purchased these properties. They knew the entire amount of that 51 or 60-something acres was not developable. But they are using that. So I would question whether or not they have a right to use all of that acreage when so much of it was undevelopable when they purchased the property. If you decrease the amount of property that they are able to develop legally, because you can't put a home under a power line or on the gas line or in the lake, um, then you would decrease the density, and I think that's the way that the council could go to decrease the density. I want to work with this development. I'm not anti-development. I am anti this. But I definitely think that that property would make a beautiful home like other homes in the Mirror Lake area. Okay, that's three minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Was there some, anyone else? Yes. <clears throat> I'm uh, Matthew Fielder, and I'm at uh, 8915 Connors Road, which is the property right on this back, this other side here. <clears throat> so uh, I have obviously some concerns, um, and I'm, I'm like her. I'm not opposed to the development at all. I, I, I like the aspect of the development and bringing uh, better things to our community. Um, but my concern is mainly <clears throat> all kind of is summed up on what are the uh, what are they going to do to bridge urban life to rural properties um, and that that's just not what I see right there that's <clears throat> my my biggest concern is privacy concerns with all these houses backed up to my property uh, we, we've lost a lot and I mean we lose a lot there so uh, what are they doing? Do they have do they have a buffer zone in between that uh, property line? Um, uh, what are what kind of privacy trees and or privacy wall or something? What what kind of things are they doing uh, 
there as well. So I bought eight and a half acres in this community to, uh, because I'm a very private person. I like to, I enjoy uh, my property. I enjoy my trees. Uh, one question that I got is how many trees per acre are they gonna leave for the community? You know, I mean, they can't just be very few properties that supply all the oxygen for this area. Um, and just, are these lots going to be less than a third acre or less than a quarter acre? Uh, what kind of backyards are backing up to my property there too? Just, those are some concerns I have. Um, will this will this bring uh, sewer and city water over into our properties? Will this bring uh, faster internet into our properties? Those are some things that I've, I'll look forward to uh, about the properties. So that's all I have. Thank okay, you. thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Dwayne Cannon. I live at 8934 Connors Road and will yield my three minutes to Brenda. She's more prepared than I am. So, Brenda. So I'm Brenda Canop. I live at 8934 Connors Road. We come with proposals. We don't just come with don't do it, don't do it. One of our proposals is decrease the land that's developable and make them stick to the density for the land that's developable. Another one is increase the buffer zone. If they can ask for variances, we can ask for variance. I would like for you to increase the buffer zone that is called for in your standards, which I have there, of 20 feet. I would like to increase it to 50 feet on the north and east side of this community, leaving the trees that are there, not wholesale taking every tree out and putting two trees on each of these little bitty tiny lots that they've got in there, and then in 50 years when I'm dead, they'll be grown in a nice buffer. I would like for you to leave the trees that are there for 50 foot on the other side of the, in addition to the setbacks required by the ordinance, and I have all of that information in the packet which you were provided. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I do have one just short uh, about the traffic study, if you don't mind. Yeah, come. I'm sorry, Dwayne Cannon, uh, 8934 Connors Road. Um, I policed for 20 years. I worked traffic my whole life and know how traffic patterns work. I am not an expert in it, but I will tell you this. I've lived on that area for 30 years, 34 years. Traffic has increased tremendously since the school has gone in. In the mornings, you cannot even walk up and down the roads. Uh, if we're going to go and do a five mile, two mile walk, you can't do it because traffic will absolutely run over you. They fly up and down that road. Every afternoon uh, when school lets out and when school is letting in, the road is completely blocked with cars letting kids out and picking kids up, which I understand the parents want to do that with their kids. Traffic studies are traffic studies. Realistically, that road is overrun right now with traffic, with the narrow roads we have and the intersections we have, and no uh, turn lane by the school to get the parents off the main roadway going to and from school with their children. So please understand, I'm not, again, like Brenda, everybody else, I'm not against this community. I want to make it safer and better for all of us. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Mitchell, uh, 202 Trouble Gap Road, Cumming, Georgia. I'm one of the attorneys for LGI, and I do appreciate having a couple minutes to address some of the things that have come up tonight. Um, so this, obviously this uh, preliminary plan application was before you last month and there was some more information that, that you wanted to get and we did our best to get that. And the, the, the big piece was this traffic memorandum. Again, the traffic engineer said there will be a minimum impact to roads. Traffic is a concern for everyone, absolutely. Uh, but I, I just want to point out a couple of things. Uh, one thing, um, staff has been great to work with. The, uh, Mr. Johnson and I, we had a conversation. He, he explained the additional information that the, the, that the Planning Commission wanted to see. And so we set about trying to answer those questions as quickly as we could. Wish we could have gotten it to you sooner, but we got it to you as soon as we could. And thankfully, it's good news uh, you know, as far as what the impact of the traffic is, is expected to be. But I do also want to point out that the, the, a traffic study or even a traffic memorandum was not at, 
in and of itself a requirement for the preliminary plat. So we're certainly beyond the rezoning process, and as Mr. Elliott was discussing earlier, this is all subject to very fresh zoning conditions that have been, been recently approved. And so this really is not the forum to try to negotiate buffers or anything like that. We come to you to meet all of the standards that we're supposed to meet, and that's exactly what we've done. Uh, so I'm, I'm here with Aaron McCullough, our engineer tonight, but the, the plats in front of you, that hasn't changed. Again, I understand that you want as much time to review, in, uh, <clears throat> to review information materials as you can, but that, that didn't change. The only, the only thing that was new from the last meeting is that we hired a traffic engineer to do the traffic memorandum, and we also made sure that all the I's were dotted and all the T's were crossed with the application itself, getting all the signatures that were necessary, clearing up ownership issues and all of that. And again, uh, staff was excellent to work with to make sure that we had a complete application. So when we come to you with a preliminary plat application, it's our duty and obligation to meet all the performance standards, to come to you with a plan that complies with the law of Villarica. And that, those, that law is set forth in the zoning ordinance, is set forth in the conditions. It's all part of the plat. These are performance standards that we have to meet. And, and, and we've, we've done that. And uh, if there are you know, particular questions or issues, uh, details that we can address to help clarify, certainly we'd be happy to do that. But we've come here to dot the I's, cross the T's, and answer questions. So if, if there are any other questions we can answer, again, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or against this preliminary plot? Connors Road. I just have a quick question. As I understand it, this preliminary plat is to approve, and then they will come back, according to Mr. Bobby's conversation, they will come back after the roads and the sewer and everything are in and get approval of the final plat before the city council. And that's going to be too late to add additional setbacks because the roads will already be in place. And you'll end up with homes like those three homes in Liberty Point that are too narrow to put a home on. So I think these things have to be discussed at this point because if you pass this, they're going to put those roads in and it's too late for the rest of us who live out there. Have you had any comments with the, uh, with the staff? Have you spoken to them? Yes, sir. I've been previously? working with Mr. Johnson since Jan or January or February on this issue and he and I have been um, going back. We've met in his office a couple of times. We've emailed back and forth quite frequently about this because I'm a little late to this game. I didn't realize um, with the annexation that took place across the street of me, I didn't realize that that necessarily was city limits. I thought down on the road where it said the city limits was, I thought that was city limits. My bad. I've lived out on that road since 1987. I'm the notary on the majority of the right-of-way easements to get that road paved so that we could get development in there. We're not anti-development in that area. And we really would like to work with the developer and the city to find a good transition from subdivision and city life to the country life which we enjoy. Being able to hear the whippoorwills at night, having eight deer eating in my upper pasture. So we would like to work with them and make this a nice transition so that we can all be happy. Okay. Thank you very much. If, if I might add, and I apologize if, if this is already clear, but the, the buffers are already set. That, that's, that's part of the zoning ordinance. Okay, thank you. What is the, One. if there are no further comments, I'll close the public hearing and revert back to staff. Uh, counselors, do you have any further questions for the staff? Well, you know, I, I do have one comment too, and that is, <clears throat> I know we're looking closely at a lot of these, but some of these are, they're pretty good sized numbers of houses and then people to live in the houses. Or, or living units, and <clears throat> the uh, city manager recently said he expected something like, you know, 5,000 new uh, dwelling units, permits for that many, here in just the next few years. And so, I mean, in light of that, it makes me, I mean, if you figure, um, you know, three people per household, that's 15,000 new people 
to me, well, we've got to make sure we, we do our due diligence and we approve the right sort of things for, for us to have a, a safe uh, community and one that uh, everyone wants to live in and that uh, it's an enjoyable uh, place to live. And uh, I'm telling you, that's a lot of people to put in on our current existing uh, infrastructure and that we need to be careful not to overcrowd existing de uh, developments with new things being piled in on top of them. And that's part of our job too. And that means, this doesn't mean we're against it. I've, I financed real estate all my career uh, in the, as a banker. And that was, uh, you know, I love financing dirt for people and seeing houses built. But, um, but by the same token, we got to do our own due diligence and make sure that we're complying with the standards and that we're doing the right thing for the people living in the community. I Thank guess you, Mr. I do have a question for Ms. Johnson. What says the city with regards to what Mrs. Cannon delivered with regards to actual usable space? The math that Mrs. Cannon <laughs> delivered with regards to actual buildable space. Does the city, in its recommendation, take into consideration that 14 acres being subtracted from the total sum since it's not buildable upon? Right, so um, I think what we're talking about here also is a difference between gross density and net density for development. Um, so gross density has to take into account the entirety of the lot area um, as a part of the density uh, the calculation, um, including all open space, uh, that includes streets, that includes everything, everything within the property boundaries. Um, the net density uh, takes out all of those public areas, um, and it, that the density calculation is just a straight density of, of the, the housing area, um, specifically just the houses. So the number that you gave us that we were talking about um, previously, is that a net or is that a gross density number? That we're That's a gross about? density number. Okay, so a net density number would be much more condensed because Which, if, uh, if Ms. Canna, and I, I trust her math impeccably, uh, and I have before. Me too. Uh, and I have before. <laughs> Uh, that uh, so there's about 14 acres of this it's not able to be built upon essentially yes that's correct because okay. yes. of wetlands and setbacks and power lines mm -hmm. so we're really getting we're really developing more like what 40 acres I guess well Six I mean it, it ends up uh, bunching up your uh, your residential units as we can see um, yeah. here's there will be a large expanse of open space areas including the easement area um, but you're obviously not going to get very much open space anywhere else. It's clumped together. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments the commission has? David? You know, my biggest concern, I think, is, you know, in addition to the traffic, as much as the traffic circle uh, would improve the flow of traffic, this, the density that I'm looking at is, uh, is quite a bit. I mean, there's like 13 houses over two acres. Um, you know, it's just, uh, I, I agree with the, with a lot of these concerns, the direction of where we want to go. We're not going to grow any more land. I mean, put something out there that spread them out a little bit, put a better product down. That's my thoughts. Any reaction, Ron? Do you have something new to add, or is this? Um... Well, I, 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 it, it may be, and again, I'll be very brief. But in, in the calculations, in the calculations of units per acre, we've followed the the zoning ordinance, and and that's what we're constitutionally entitled to do. And certainly, we're trying to do the the best product and the best layout we can on on, on this property. And if there's future considerations to be made on other parcels of land, I certainly do respect that. Thank you. Ron, is there adequate uh, provisions for water and sewer for this uh, development? 
Yes, um, there are. Um, this area uh, does not have any type of bottlenecks in regards to uh, water or sewer. Uh, the plan is under the, um, the maximum um, capacity, is not even close to that. Um, um, so there shouldn't be any issues with water and sewer. Okay, the uh, commissioners have any other comments or questions? Um, I'll entertain a motion for this preliminary plot. We tabled it at the last meeting. Um, Mr. Johnson, what were the comments from staff on this uh, on this application? Comments from staff? Yeah. Didn't you have? I thought I thought there was, but perhaps I'm wrong. No, there wasn't. No, there there shouldn't be any uh, any comments. There was no planning report or anything like that okay. for for this. For planning, okay. <clears throat> Well, I will, um, uh, move that we, um, approve this request. Um, then as, uh, uh submitted. Is there a second? Hearing no second. The motion dies. Huh? The motion dies. Um, Ron, the staff worked closely with a group of people from Mirror Lake on the master plan that was going in. Um, now, the young lady presented a lot of very valid considerations, it seems, tonight. Um, and could that not be something that you could work with, with them on their concerns and come up with some provisions that accommodates the, their concerns? Uh, it would be a, a really a three-way um, conversation, essentially. I mean, we can work with uh, anyone, as uh, of course. We would love to work with anybody um, that has any concerns for any development. Um, but of course, the developer would um, be the one that would have to uh, implement maybe some of those things that are on-site um, uh, problems. And some of the off-site related issues uh, would, I, I would imagine, would be a developer and a city related uh, conversation that we would have to also have, depending on what some of, those, what, what some of the concerns are. For example, I heard buffers tonight, for example. Um, we would have to talk to the developer about the potential for putting additional buffers um, for some of these properties, uh, for example. Um, and, and I'm sure there's many others that might be able to potentially uh, change some of the, uh, some of the, I guess, uh, issues, if you will, that uh, some folks in the uh, area are having with this development. Uh, some of the things are probably not going to be able to be fixed, like uh, two entrances, for example. Um, that's something that we can't fix. Um, the traffic that would come from the development, well, we couldn't fix. Um, it, it would really be primarily on-site and directly off-site related issues related to buffer, maybe open space or something of that nature. Fencing, mounds. Well, the fact that this has not been approved by planning and zoning is somewhat meaningless in that uh, this will now go to council, I presume, at their next meeting? No, because uh, it's, this is a preliminary plat, so uh, that, don't, that stops here. Uh, the planning commission has the final word on a preliminary plat. Well, any other suggestions by the commissioners? Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we deny the preliminary plat application for Connors Landing Plat 04-21. Is 
Is there a second? I will second that motion by Mr. Okay. Chairman. The motion has been made and seconded that we deny the preliminary plat application, plat 0421. All in favor? Opposed? 3 1. Denied. Okay. Item B, RA0821, rezoning of parcels um, with all of those letters, all those numbers. Um, now bear in mind, this is just to approve rezoning of these lots, nothing more. So, Ron. Sure. Thank you, Chairman. RA-08-21, um, and for the record, these are uh, parcels V05, 01, 8008. 85 and V05018062, which are located on Mirror Lake Boulevard at Shoreline Parkway. Uh, the applicant has requested a rezoning of these two parcels. Um, the applicant is Fuqua Acquisitions 2 LLC of Atlanta, Georgia, and they're looking to rezone these, 50, these two 55 acre um, parcels from industrial medium density I2 to single family attached SFA, commercial medium density C2, and multifamily medium density MF2 uh, in order to construct a, um, a, a mixed-use development. Um, the mixed-use development would actually take, the, take place on a three parcel, it's a total of three parcels, um, but this application specifically is just speaking about the southern two parcels, the largest parcels of it, um, being that they're under common ownership and common zoning uh, that they're applying for and coming from. Um, and the project would consist of 18.9 acres dedicated to commercial space, 255 townhome units, and 208 multifamily units. But now, Mr. Johnson, that the third parcel, um, 0075, is listed in our application. It is, yes. The, so we don't, we don't have to deal with that tonight? You will in the next application. The next, okay. The next yes. Oh, it looked like it was in the same submission. I just sure. wondered. And just right. to, I guess, to clarify for the public here, um, we uh, we have two applications for one project, mm -hmm. uh, but there's three parcels involved. So the first application that we're hearing right now is for two um, uh, two parcels, and then the last parcel would be the second application that we're about to hear. Um, we sp uh, they're split up because there's uh, different zoning categories um, between these two lots and the uh, the following lot after this. Uh, Ron, where does this dandelion property fit into this? This is part of 085. Sure. So uh, the, the survey that you have that says dandelion properties, that's actually was submitted along with a, uh, a letter by an adjacent uh, property owner. Right. Um, dandelion properties and um, I'm not sure if they're here uh, this evening but um, they uh, they submitted letter and a survey just to show where their property is in relation um, so if you are looking at it okay. it would be to the north um, of their property so it's adjacent to parcel a no no here. C. Is that parcel C, parcel C. C. this is basically where McNeilis yes is. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it was confusing. Now, they're suggesting that this could be a noise factor, uh, but they don't say that they're against the rezoning. So um, I'll, I'll have them address their comments, being that it is a member of the public, um, and it's not actually a part of the uh, actual application um, itself. It's, uh, it was, it's an addendum that the staff added um, at the request of the uh, citizen. Okay. Um, the uh, project will be adjacent to the Arbor Valley development. Uh, multi it's a multifamily development and will straddle the proposed Mirror Lake connector road uh, between Mirror Lake and the downtown. Uh, grocer, several restaurant pad sites, and a retail strip center is proposed along Mirror Lake Boulevard. Um, and under, uh, let's see. 
under RA-09-21, which we will be hearing next, um, it, it's a property to the, uh, to the north um, of the subject property. I reference it in the staff report as parcel A. Uh, it's the smallest parcel. Um, that's also going to be included as a part of this development, and the parcels were previously zoned general industrial under the, United, uh, under the Unified Development Code, and it was uh, laterally zoned to I-2 upon the uh, citywide rezoning in 2020, and they're not requesting any variances as a part of this. But in our consideration, we are also rezoning parcel A? In the next, uh, in RA-09, uh, in okay. the next okay. one, yes. But okay. as of now, There's just the. Of that property. That's okay. right. Mm -hmm. Ron, okay. if you would just. I know the bypass has come well. It's not the one I'm looking at. The bypass is planned. Um, again, we'll call this C, B, and A. Once it gets past A, is the bypass going to divert on these properties to the left or the right? I mean, are they going to be dealing with any of that in the future that you know of? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I might have to uh, defer a little bit to uh, Bobby um, since it's somewhat engineering related. I've yeah. been seeing those maps for 25 years, so I'm not sure exactly where yeah, the, from what I understand the final that, line is. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Now, this was, uh, again, one of those deals where we got the original package and then uh, got another revision, which was significantly different, but in reading them in detail, they're both identical. So, um, and I, this seems to me to be a very desirable um, rezoning um, and use of that property, so. And um, just so I'm clear, Ron, we're not voting, and I'm looking at your table number two that you, I think that you put together. Yes. Okay, we're not actually voting on any sort of actual plat or plan, we're just voting on zoning today, correct? That's correct, okay. just zoning. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Then I'll save all those questions for later. <laughs> hey, uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have a request. Go ahead. <clears throat> Can we uh, increase the temperature on the thermostat? I'm, <laughs> I, I don't have the benefit <laughs> of any uh, insulation. But you have a hat. Up here. Well, yeah, I could put my hat on, but I just didn't think it would. I was always told it wasn't polite in, in, inside. So thank you so much. I, Very good. Um, any other questions for Mr. Johnson? If not, uh, we require a public hearing. It this? does, yes, it does require a public hearing and the applicant is here uh, tonight. They have uh, some uh, presentations and a couple exhibits that uh, they would like to show. Well, let me hear first from the uh, from the applicant. Sure. Please go to the. Oh. Go to the podium, please. Now, are either one of you, Jeff? I'm Fuqua? Jeff Fuquay, Fuquay Development, right here. Uh, Jeff, did you used to live in Augusta? I did not. You didn't? My do doppelganger did, but not me. Are you related to JB? <laughs> it's funny, everybody thinks I am, but I'm not. But his son lives across the street from me, Rex. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I go to the hospital or to a restaurant, I say I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just, just wondered, I, happen, yeah. I happen to know him and the family over there, so oh, really? very, yeah. very minimally, but. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of them running around. Okay, your name and address, please. Jeff uh, Fuquay, um, um, my address, eight, uh, 11 Piedmont Center. Atlanta, Let's Georgia. not spend much time there. I don't, not right now, I don't, <laughs> no. <laughs> our poor office, we're not going to, we don't go into our office very much. Okay, go. But uh, thanks for meeting with us. Um, um, we're, we're a large, uh, the largest, actually, mixed-use retail developer in Atlanta, in fact, in the southeast. And we develop a lot of projects like this um, around the region. We developed the battery, for instance, with the Braves, projects like that. And uh, most, most of the mixed-use projects in urban Atlanta, I would say, except for, uh, 
except for uh, uh, Pond City Market and uh, and uh, Atlantic Station, I would say, most of the rest of them. And uh, we have a number of projects under construction around the region, a big $300 million project called the Exchange. If you Google Exchange Gwinnett, it's right across the Mall of Georgia, 100 acres, big project, you know, Top Golf, 25 restaurants, Sprouts Grocery Store, 1,000 uh, residential units, um, Andretti's, Food Hall, Pickleball Courts, big project, a lot of, a lot of things like that. And, um, um, and again, a project like this around the region as well, this 60 plus acre, we always like to have a grocery in our projects and uh, a multifamily townhomes and a lot of food. And uh, we have a real program on how to develop these and uh, I think we have the best reputation in the industry for doing this. And when we do it, we, we build them all at one time. And so uh, we were searching the area and, uh, and our, our grocery said they'd like to do something here and that led us to this site. And um, um, we put together this plan. We think it's a good plan. And uh, hopefully we, if we can get approved here and in, in, in our zoning, we'd like to start construction the second quarter of next year. Um, you can see there, I think we have 255 townhomes, 208 multifamily units, 60,000 foot grocery store, mostly restaurant out parcels and, and other service retail in line. We have a big plaza back there at the end, uh, in, in, in the, end of the, the end of that retail bay for, um, for outdoor dining. Uh, we are avoiding the, the creeks that are on the property today and leaving all that green space and, uh, and those buffers in place. And, um, and the, of course, the, uh, the new uh, parkway will come right through this project and uh, land right in downtown. And it'll connect to Mirror Lake and all the way to downtown. Will the, uh, will the roads be constructed all the way through at the same time, or will that be a a, a partial <clears throat> project piece by piece? Well, we we uh, we would probably build to the roundabout, and then the city build after that would be the intent. Thank you. And we don't have a name for it. But we're, we're looking to the city or neighbors or friends to come up with a name. Pumpkin Town Village. What was that? Pumpkin, Pumpkin, Pumpkin Town, Town Village. Pumpkin Town Village. Yeah, Village. we like that. We like that. The green at Pumpkin Town. The green at Pumpkin Town. The green at Pumpkin Town. Yeah, Town. yeah the green at <laughs> <and> Pumpkin Town. <laughs> there you go. The arbor. The arbor at Pumpkin Town. I think this is a. How many? How big? How much the cost of this project? One hundred and thirty million dollars. I can't remember. It's it's a big investment. It draws, has about 60, 70, 69 million a year in, in, in retail sales, and uh, I think $2 million a year in uh, property taxes. Now, no single family units at all? No single family. All townhouses, townhouses and multifamily. And multifamily right. And this would seem to me to be a significant advantage to those in uh, Mirror Lake. Uh, Access to oh, yeah, it's commercial. The, the road will be golf cart accessible. Yeah, yeah. I have a trail. It'll be a nice project. We have some elevations in there too. It's a, it's good looking. But we're open to discussion on that. But it's a good looking project. It'll, it'll be the dominant retail project in in the market. Now certainly. you indicated you would start late second quarter. Late second quarter next year. Mm -hmm. Price point on the. The townhomes, you have an idea. Two fifty to three, I would okay. say. And you know the apartments, will, you know, they'll be the best product probably in the trade area as well. You know, we usually get better rents. Uh, if you're part of a retail project, it's walkable. You get ten, fifteen percent better rents typically. It's a, it's a, it's a luxury product. Well, this property's been sitting there for decades. Uh, I used to ride a dirt bike on it in the 80s, so yeah, it's been so oh, really? a long really? time. <laughs> I grew up right around the corner from it. Uh, <laughs> I grew up on North Avenue right there. How funny. So <laughs> I, I rode a dirt bike. It's been blank forever. Um, I think that connection to downtown, that's really going to be a big deal. I think it's uh, – that's why that's why our, our retail wants to be here is that you know, we're connecting to downtown from Mirror Lake Boulevard and Mirror Lake. It really is a I do like thing. the idea of giving the, the citizens on that side of town an access – back to 78 into downtown without having to go over the flyover bridge, without having to go back to the Red Lake. That's 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 a desirable thing. Or to cross the railroad track. Yeah. 
I agree. That's not bad. It's a good project. Okay. If you can, right. we'll any show you any of our work. If you want to see any of our work around the market, we'll show it to you. Any further comments that you would like to make? I don't think so. Your partner? <laughs> I think I'm good. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, we got um, uh, these, uh, ap was it three total applications here? Um, two? Two. Okay. Two so me. these two that are uh, practically, I mean, contiguous, they're adjacent, they're, uh, it's all part of the same, same development. Same, yeah, same thing. I'm going to uh, move that we consider well, we both have, of I'd these. I'd like to uh, open it to public hearing before you. But I mean, so that people in the public hearing understand, I, I'm going to consider these together as a. Um, uh, no. We can't do that? We've got. We've got to vote on individually. We've got we, two separate okay. Uh, okay. items. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I would like to uh, open this to public hearing. If anybody would care to comment in favor or against this rezoning, uh, please come forward and. State your name and address. Thank I'm, you. I'm in favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Fuqua. Seeing, right. no, seeing nobody coming forward, I will close the public hearing and uh, now entertain a motion from the commissioners unless you have other questions of the uh, staff. I guess I do have a quick question. Right. Uh, Ron, is there, I know when building streets, um, there are state requirements, sewage requirements, gutter requirements, those sort of things, all those requirements. Uh, has the city set aside funds? Do they have funds available to complete that project, the red part that we see? Is that, is that a, does the city have plans or if this goes through and it comes to fruition, can the city meet them halfway with the necessary funds and roads to make that happen? There are plans to do that. Okay. Um, I'm not sure um, where we are as far as uh, us actually having or enc encumbered any funds. Gotcha. Um, but I know that that is an active conversation. It's an active plan. And, and I, mean, I guess you could do it with T-Splot, but also is there intimate domain issues okay. where you're going to have to take people's property or buy people's property and make this work? Yeah. Yes, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, so those three things have to be crossed. To That's correct. Okay. Okay. Okay, may I have a motion for... Um, Item B, which is RA0821, rezoning of parcels, blah, 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 62 and 85. I move that we approve the rezoning. I'll second. Been moved and seconded that we approve the rezoning for these parcels. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 4-0 passed. Okay, item C, RA0921, Ron. We've lost Ron. I'm sorry. We um, there was a, a bit of a technical a, a technicality here. Um, your, as far as the, your motion, um, it should be contingent upon um, a survey um, being submitted to us. Um, being that this is a split zoning um, that we have and there's multiple zoning categories, they need to be tied to something when we rezone an application. Um, there should be some sort of legal description or something that it ties it to. Um, otherwise, it just looks like three lots and they're just you know, random zoning and the like. So we can continue with your motion. However, um, it would just need to be contingent upon that survey being uh, submitted to Bobby and, um, and approved. Okay. Ron, this is another example of something coming up at the last minute. Then. Ron, would that be an additional motion that you need? No, just a single, single motion. Okay. We can amend a motion that's passed already. It would have to be the yes. Uh, the okay. Reason. okay, thank you. The reasoning for this, pardon me, y'all, but um, if you look at that, um, the concept plan that you see on the screen, it's a little bit different than the paper version that we've got. Uh, you're starting with three parcels. You're ending with three parcels that are different.
from the beginning parcels you started with. Um, we won't know where those final parcel boundary lines are until they get their project designed. So the motion should be to approve contingent on a final survey recorded that defines those three parcels. Did we not know this yesterday or this afternoon? This is not information that would be provided in your packet. It's standard information when you have a project like this that you don't end up with a single large parcel. When you have, when it's divvied up into three that are not the same three that you started with. Um, they can't, in other words, they can't design their project and then try to apply for zoning. You just don't do that. You, you, you approve the zoning contingent on the final survey that's recorded to find the parcels. That's the way it's done. I understand, but why wasn't that presented to us before we made the motion? I, okay. Can we amend the motion then, uh, Mr. Max? Sorry, I will do it. I will, uh, yeah, based on what we had originally about the approval, we, we made a motion to approve. However, based on the information we've been given, we will amend our motion and make a motion that we approve contingent to the filing and approval and stamp copy of a survey of all, well, we can't say all three because we only have two that we're considering this time. That's right. Of the two that are being considered this time, which are the parcel numbers V0501 80062, V0501 80085. And I'll second the motion. All in favor of the amendment? Okay. Item C. RA 09 21 384 Mirror Lake Boulevard. Um, this is a rezoning request also from Fuqua Acquisitions 2 uh, to go for a 6.1 acre uh, parcel uh, to be rezoned from single family agricultural AG to single family attached SFA and commercial medium density C2. The staff recommends approval. With a contingency, with a, a modification again? Or? Same contingency, same <laughs> modification. Then I will. Uh, make a motion that we approve with the same contingency and the same modification as stated prior. We need a public comment. Yeah, we do. Yes, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Yeah, I just asked if it was the same contingency, and it is. So, no, I know, I know. I know. All right, so we will have a public hearing on uh, this rezoning of parcel V08-18075. Anybody wishing to come forward to speak for or against this rezoning? Please come forward and state your name and address. You have three minutes. I see Mr. no one Chairman, coming. Just so I'm properly oriented here. This is the parcel directly to the north of these, these others under consideration that now has a single family dwelling on it? That is correct, yes. Okay, no takers for public hearing, so we're reserved back to uh, council and staff. Um, so I'll entertain a motion. I uh, will again renew my motion to approve uh, the rezoning with the conditions as stated prior on this particular piece of property, uh, parcel known as V0501 80075 from AG to C2. Is there a second? And, and single family. And single family attached. I'll second. Okay, a motion made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous? Okay. All right, that concludes the uh, rezoning items that we have. And um, next item is a hearing on Planning Commission board member applications.
Uh, we have received two applications for replacing um, Ward 1 Plan Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and we'll wait while people exit. Um, so we have two applications, uh, one for Shirley A. Hillsman um, and the other from a Douglas Lang. Um, I believe Mrs. Hillsman is from Ward 1. Yes. Um, and Willie, who we are replacing, is also from Ward 1. So mm -hmm. this is appropriate. And um, any comments that the commissioners would like to make about the applications? We really need this position filled because we've had a couple of 2 2 motions and uh, we need a fifth member. So. I agree, we need to get Phil. Uh, is it appropriate for the council or for the commission to make a recommendation or? Yes. This normally is done, appointed by the, um, the ward council person and recommended by the mayor. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, you can uh, submit a recommendation um, through me, of course, um, as a, a part of a motion, um, and I can get that to the next uh, city council meeting. Um, and I just wanted to say that both of these um, applicants are here as well um, tonight. Um, so uh, just in case you did want to hear from them as well. Um, but we do intend on having this on the next uh, city council agenda next week. I would like to hear from them just briefly. Sure. Figure out Absolutely. why they won't be here. Okay. Um, is Mr. Lang available? Uh, my name is Doug Lang. Thank you, Mayor Stoll. Cool. All your, all your speaking. Thank you. Thank you. My name is. <clears throat> Pardon me. My name is Doug Lang. I reside at 262 South Cower Road here in downtown Villa Rica. I am currently um, a board member of the HPC. And while I enjoy that very much, historic preservation, um, as I noted on my application, I'm also very interested in the growth and well-being of the future of the city, as I believe they go hand in hand in, in, in a lot of respects. And I think it would just be a, um, give me a different perspective to see, you know, what we're restoring, what we're keeping, and, and how we're growing and making sure that there, there's no, I don't see any conflict between the two of those, but there certainly could be. And I just think it, it gives a little bit of a, a unique perspective. I do have some experience, um, limited, but some experience in working with PNZ and development of a piece of property, a commercial piece of property right here downtown. And so I am familiar with site plans and permits and working with GDOT and utilities and many, if not all, the things that go into developing property. Our development was, you know, personal. My, my wife's and my own. It was very small, but still right here in downtown on Bankhead Highway. And um, I've been a resident for uh, Villa Rica for 19 years. And uh, just very interested in continuing to serve the community, not in, a, not in place of HPC, but in addition to, and looking to volunteer my time and see where I can be helpful, in this case, in the growth of the city with PNC. So I just thank you for your time and consideration. Do you see any conflicts with your uh, other activities that you've had with PNZ? You mentioned you, you had properties and whatever that. No, we had one one commercial property that we developed. Um, it was actually the coin-operated car wash next to Evans Barbecue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Probably. And we bought that property. We demolished the the car wash, and we built. A small office building there which has since been sold we're not in the business at all um, I'm not in real estate I'm not in development it's just something my wife and I uh, decided to just take a 
an investment just to try and do something like that downtown. And we have since sold that the one property that we had uh, that we developed. We had since sold that now to the third largest realtor in the country. And so we felt that we did something good, you know, bringing in an employer and uh, hopefully creating a handful of jobs at the, at the real estate office. But we have no, I say we, my wife and I, we're, we're retired. We have no business, no business interests with the city, no contracts, no dealings, no property development, no other property we own okay. other than private property, you know, a personal home. And uh, not, there's, no, there's no conflicts. Okay. So. Is there any conflict with meeting dates? Uh, we meet typically the first Tuesday in the month. Uh, I don't know when the HBC meets, but. Uh, uh, a third. So okay. actually, there's no conflict, even if they were back to back weeks for me. Um, but there's actually uh, two weeks in between. Okay. So okay. there's no conflict for, for me personally, okay. prof no professionally or personally. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Lyons. you for your time and consideration. Any other comments or questions that Chris should say? No, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hilsman? Would you uh, move that microphone down so that, <laughs> and you may want to remove your mask too? Okay. Okay. Well, I'd just like to say, my name is Shirley A. Hillsman. I live 406 Darden Street here in Villarica. And I'm a lifelong citizen of the town. And uh, I'm a retired uh, CNA. And right now I just have some time on my hand. And I want to do what I could, if I could, if I could to improve the growth and the development of the city. And uh, I'm not familiar with none of the stuff that is going on, half of it, but um, I learn fast and I just like to do what I can, if I can, to make things better. Okay. And you have no conflicts with these meeting dates or times? So. No. Sometimes we get carried away. It's uh, again whatever that clock says. 7:30. Yeah, I know. I know. But, um, so I'm used to that. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, thank you very much. Any thank you, Ms. Questions Hilton. for the commissioners? Okay, thank you, Ms. Holton. Thank you. Are Ron? Are there any other pending applications for the position? There are no pending applications. We've had uh, this on our Facebook site. Uh, I've talked to Elisa, the city clerk. Uh, she put it on there a number of weeks ago. Um, I remember at our last meeting, we uh, did have this on the agenda for board, uh, meaning that we only had one application at the time, I believe. Uh, and we've received one other application since then. So that's why we have two tonight, but hasn't been any um, new ones. Not, not an extremely popular uh, sought after position. Well, to be fair, you guys are actually much more popular, uh, unfortunately, than uh, the HPC. We haven't received any uh, applications for that seat yet. So um, you should tell them the compensation wait. package is outstanding. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> well, I, I think it's appropriate then for the commissioners to um, we have the two applications and apparently not going to get any further. Um, so I think it's appropriate if you would care to uh, recommend one of these two applicants to the um, city council and the mayor for their nomination. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we uh, recommend uh, Shirley Hillsman uh, to council for uh, uh, nomination to this um, commission. Is there a second? I'll second Mrs. Hillsman. Okay, we've been moved and seconded that we recommend Shirley Hillsman for consideration for the Ward 1 uh, Planning and Zoning Commission position. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lang and Ms. Uh, Hillsman for 
coming and for your remarks. Um, okay, staff comments, Ron? Yes, um, just a few uh, small comments. Um, as we saw uh, uh, tonight with Fuqua, um, we have quite a number of developments um, that are uh, you know, coming or that are already here. Um, we currently have just one application in um, that, that needs to be reviewed. Um, for it's, this would be an, uh, an alteration to an existing project um, that um, has, has gone on, um, but unfortunately was stopped because of the pandemic. So uh, on Highway 61. Um, so I, I'm reviewing that one right now, but that's the only one um, that I have in for review right now. Um, so that should be coming to you in November, the next meeting. Okay. So have... Any comments from commissioners for Ron? What about the idea that we put a deadline uh, out there officially, uh, at least several days, you know, five days before uh, this scheduled meeting for us to receive new information to be considered on an existing application and therefore give us time to provide an adequate review and make certain that we <clears throat> understand thoroughly the implications and that way, then we're not coming here to sit down, you know, at uh, at 5:50, and we get handed a package that amends uh, the stuff that we've already spent several days going over. We can take a look at that. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of particulars and a lot of um, things to think about if we were to do that, being that our applications are, um, after it comes to the Planning Commission, it still has to go on to the City Council um, in the following month. Um, so there's a gap there, but if, you, if, they don't re, if they don't receive the same information that you receive, then they're gonna end up reverting that back to you, which we've seen before. Um, so even if something came, came in um, just afterwards or after your meeting or just, uh, you know, or, or maybe even much, much later, just before the city council meeting, um, if that happens, then it would end up coming back. So, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of different things. If we were to put a, a five-day cutoff, for example, um, then they're missing a cycle that they otherwise would be on. Um, to get to a planning commission meeting, and then if they're moved back to, they'll, they'll be losing essentially like two months because what, of city what council cycle? as well. We have a schedule that we go off of for these meetings. Um, so for turning it for submittals, for example, um, yeah, and the but like. If, but you know, if this guy's going to be a developer on a piece of property and you know involving several hundred homes and you know a lot of money and all this sort of stuff. He's got to be somebody who's pretty <clears throat> um, organized and experienced and he can get his um, things together and get it uh, submitted on time. I don't see that big of a deal between the day of our meeting and five days prior to our meeting. I mean, if he's going to be the kind of organized, professional uh, person that you want developing a project of this type, they should be able to get their stuff together and get us a complete package for consideration so that we have time to consider it appropriately. And then it can still go to the city council the next week. They don't, none of, none of our applications go the following week. They go the following, the following month. No, well then the following um, month, and there's plenty of time for it to still go to that. But I'm just, I'm just tired of having to sure. look at something on the fly after I've already spent a pretty good amount of time uh, analyzing the package and 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 uh, and doing things like you know everybody said here like riding out and taking a look at the piece of property uh, you know and and then uh, you know stuff comes in that substantially uh, changes uh, the uh, the application right here on the day of the meeting I mean certainly they had to have known this is not oh we've decided to change this from from uh, 20 to 25 lots well that didn't just come up today did it i'm sorry what was that what was that question i mean if the developer if the developers got this plat out here okay uh -huh. and it's got 100 lots on it yes okay and that's what they presented to us that's what we've been analyzing 
that we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. And then they come in and say, well, we're going to change that and make it um, 120 units, you know. And so are we saying that it's okay if he just came up with that idea this morning? No. Do no. you think he did? I don't think so. I think he's more organized than that. All these guys are professional and experienced, and they don't need to keep coming in here at the 11th hour and modify their request and then expect us to be up to speed on it. I mean, what about the other commissioners? Am I out in the, in the, in the cold on this? No, not at all, Commissioner. No. No, and I, I, mean, I understand the cycles that the city has to go through, but I mean, as far as traffic study that, that he dropped on us today, he knew about it September, whatever, when he left. And I mean, I understand it takes a while to get it done, but it might, if it takes a while to get it done, he may just have to present it in November versus October. I mean, I just, I don't, uh, some things I don't mind at the last minute, but, you know, making votes by surprise with surprise evidence or surprise information is just, it's not very comfortable. It's not something I, I'm comfortable doing. I'd like to have it, and like I said, I actually do read through it. <laughs> you know, prior to it, I do visit the sites, um, and I've oftentimes emailed you about mm -hmm. a question or two that I've read. So you know, that's the sort of thing. Just that you know, we're, we're making the decisions. We just want to make them with all of the cards on the table, and not be given something at the last minute that may change our opinion one way or the other. Mm -hmm. That's. I think that's all it is. And if we can implement a deadline, then let's do it. If we don't have the authority, then we don't have the authority. I don't know. But if we can, I don't see how it'd be that big of a deal on a, you know, pretty multi-million dollar project to get something in five days before the meeting. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to definitely want to check in and look at the laws and, and stuff behind if a city really can or any municipality or county can <laughs> deny an applicant the ability to uh, submit paperwork or, or information that can support their case um, because the set, even if it is late. Um, I would not deny it. We're just denying it at that meeting. They can have it the next meeting and be fine. Just, well, staff, just I'm, it. I'm sorry. I meant staff. Yeah. Um, staff denying them that ability yeah. to do that. No, so. I think they can give you all whatever they want to give you, and I understand you guys have to give it to us, but I think yeah. the question mm -hmm. is do we have the authority to say, no, this didn't make the deadline? Mm -hmm. We can't consider that this time. You know, I mean, I, I, I get, I understand your position. We'll too. just you, take a look. Yeah, you're, just, you're the conduit. I understand. I understand you just conduit. I'm, I'm not trying to put you in a bad spot by no, saying no, it. No, no. And while it may or may not be, um, uh, you know, legal or um, within the policies or whatever, I mean, I think it should be encouraged that we get oh, yeah. the information with some time to consider. Absolutely, I understand the position you're in. Um, I don't want to uh, sound like I don't. Um, we, we definitely do. It's just un, unfortunately for um, for me, and I, I guess, uh, and, and definitely for um, for Whitney. You know, we're we're just we're really here just to really give you that information and make sure we relay it to you right of way. Mm -hmm. um, if we did have a, a deadline in place um, for that, I, I'm really curious what it would really uh, what that would actually look like um, as far as uh, turning uh, paperwork uh, turn, turning it away or accepting it and still not having it for a public meeting um, because it would still be on the agenda anyway. Um, there's a lot to talk about. So we'll, we'll have to, to continue this conversation so we can see uh, where we're gonna go with this. Okay. Well, okay. I, I, I think the Fuqua is a good example. Um, we got this, the package uh, you know, well in advance and went out and looked at the property and you know, looked, looked it over. Then, Two days later, or three days, whatever it was, we get a new package, and it looked totally different. A new until, package you received? Until you sit down and looked at it and compared page by page and understood, okay, this is the same material. But again, you know, had, to, had to do that all over again. And then, tonight, the fact we made a motion, now there's a survey required. Well, you know. That's frustrating, and I would think it would be frustrating to you as oh, yeah. as staff. Uh, yeah. So you know, those are specific examples that I have, as opposed to Mr. Flowers with his possible number of lots or whatever. But uh, there are specifics that that happen. Worked out okay, but, mm -hmm. but uh, 
You know, and I understand your position, and, and it may get worse. It may get worse because we're going into a very intense growth period for the city. Um, and we may see more and more things like this. I don't know. But, you know, give it your best shot is all I can say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to continue this dialogue um, in, in general. I'll be reaching out to you guys uh, again via, uh, via email, and we can maybe uh, be able to, to continue some of this and see what exactly we can do that makes um, the most sense. Um, no matter if that's completion reviews of some form um, prior to a meeting. Um, I, I've, I've done that before in a past position, um, and uh, that worked out all right, but I was still receiving information at the last minute. Um, it's really, you know, in, in planning and zoning at administration, it's, it's really difficult to just get a completed application. I, don't, I mean, maybe a handful of times since I've, I've been working here, going on three years, um, I've maybe received maybe one or two, a handful of complete applications at the submittal deadline. So it's extremely commonplace to continue to receive more and more um, supplemental information um, or revised information. Um, once I uh, do my review, for example, uh, I could pull out 10 points and 10 things that they need to uh, fix but they still want to meet their, their meeting deadline. So they're, that starts the clock, and they start racing at that point. Um, so, and some, sometimes it's, it's not even that. Maybe it's just, uh, it could be something that they're waiting on, like an item, like a traffic study, um, and that, that comes in quite late, sometime, most of the time. So. Well, I, I understand. And, I understand that uh, your concerns, though. Uh, we want to address those. And Absolutely. And it could very well have affected the first item on the agenda tonight. And Ronnie, you know, it, it's a part of the professionalism of the applicant, you know, as well. I mean, okay, <clears throat> I'll just throw you an example here. Uh, these developments that come in with um, several hundred lots uh, or uh, going to put several hundred dwelling units in, you know, and he's going to get financing for those. All right, the bank or uh, other source of financing is going to want all of the documentation it took to approve um, that uh, 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 development, you know, uh, in terms of zoning and permits and all of that sort of thing, okay? And I know because I've only seen about 10,000 of those in my career, you know, and if those guys can put together an application package that's complete, you know, for $50 million dollars, that I have to take to the board of directors for this bank. I mean, our applicants here can bring us in complete applications that we can consider uh, uh, and, uh, and, and do a good job for the city and for the future residents of that uh, project. Uh, and, and so that we're not doing it by the seat of our pants at the last minute. That's the only thing I'm frustrated with, okay? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no decisions within a vacuum. I 100% agree. It shouldn't be. Um, it, it should be uh, well thought out, obviously, and you should have time to, to look at your information. So we submitted our um, packet to the Planning Commission on Wednesday morning. Um, it was completed on Tuesday, uh, end of day, and, and it went out on Wednesday morning. Um, what you received, I believe two commissioners received a um, – a printed copy of the staff report on Friday afternoon. That was the only change. There was only one copy of that staff report um, that was received on Friday um, as we were working to complete that since this item came in uh, a bit late. So I'm not talking about only this example. I don't mean to just. No, I know, just wanted to clarify. I'm saying this is yeah. a cumulative thing over my entire tenure on the commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we've talked this. To death. Um, let me open the uh, floor for public comments. Gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. I'm Brenda Canop, 8934 Connors Road, and three minutes is an awfully short time, so I, I had to get rid of all the pleasantries earlier, and I may have sounded angry, but I wasn't. But I'm bringing a new issue to you that I would like for you to be aware, and I've provided a video, two videos actually, earlier today that I would like for you to consider regarding the school, um, Mirror Lake Elementary. 
The traffic out there is horrendous. And if you want to watch the video, this is me driving by. Yes, I'm holding my phone and videoing at the same time. This is in the afternoon. Every afternoon, every afternoon, every morning. This is the drop-off line and the pickup line. The next video, which is longer, I'm in the opposite direction and I sit for eight minutes to go a tenth of a mile. Because of the passage of the Mirror Lake Master Plan and the addition of 790 other homes across the Mirror Lake community, this is an issue that needs to be addressed and fixed um, for the safety of others. The other video shows I sit there in traffic and people will pass me on the double yellow line and go down. I see a school van in this video comes out of the school with children on it, goes straight through and goes and passes on the double yellow line to get around this backed up traffic. It is becoming worse because of COVID. People aren't sending their children to school on the school buses. They're in this line day in and day out and there is ample property out there to create a turn lane from where it stops right there at the entrance to Mirror Lake Elementary all the way down to Tyson Road and then around Tyson Road because just after you turn onto Tyson Road there is a turn lane so the turn lanes just need to be expanded in that area. I have spoken with um, the school superintendent in Douglas County. Y'all own the road. They are the school. I am the rock between the two hard places. <laughs> so you can understand our frustration and parents get frustrated and post on all the time about people passing them. But several people even on staff have committed they pass <laughs> on this. I sat in this traffic this day. My husband would have flown past on the double yellow. <laughs> but um, it is becoming an increasing issue. All of those homes that are going to be east of the elementary school in the mornings are going to turn right at that roundabout and come out in Douglas County on Connors Road. So it's going to increase our traffic in that direction because I avoid this like the plague. I got caught in this one because I went to the bank at the wrong time. Morning and night five days a week the entire time school is in. And I would really like for y'all to take up something and if it's working with the county, whatever it is. I had asked Michelle Simmons, my superintendent uh, for the school in my area to be here tonight and she wasn't apparently able to make it. Um, also, the school resource officer got out there and she doesn't put on her yellow vest when she goes to direct the traffic to let the school buses out. But they have the, they did change the routing plan one time in response to complaints and allowed parents to go around the other side and tried to create more of a drive through where there wouldn't be as much impact on the roads. But it's just worse. Currently, Ms. Simmons advised me that they're going to add another school resource officer and she's just going to stand in the road and look at the traffic because there's no way to, put, nowhere to put cars. There's no way to regulate the time that kids are dropped off or picked up. And it's a really significant problem that I would appreciate you being taking advantage of this opportunity now before we get behind the curve with all of this additional homes being added to the Mirror Lake community to address this issue. So you're asking essentially for a desail lane? A desail and yeah, it's just going to be an extension of the turn lane because to my right, right there is where the turn lane ends, the first entrance to the school where the buses are. If all the way down to Tyson Road and then tie that into the turn lane that's already on Tyson Road. And that might help the fact that there's no sidewalks connecting Ashley Highlands to the school or to the existing Mirror Lake community. They've been out there since 2007 and there's no sidewalks. So on weekends when people are out there walking, they can walk in that desail lane and be a little bit safer also. So it will serve two purposes actually. Well, I, I've driven by it and this is dangerous. I mean, those cars, are there and yeah. if you want to go further down Tyson Road or further down Connors you've got to go into the oncoming lane of traffic mm -hmm. um, and the it's one time beginning I was, to, it, sorry. there wasn't anybody coming but there could have been uh, now is part of this because of the school bus situation or I'm thinking it's because parents aren't having their their children ride the school bus because it is worse. It usually backed up to about this point, but now it's backing up onto the next subdivision back behind us. Um, my pastor is a school bus driver. He's a uh, by vocational and he's a school bus driver in Paulding County and yes there are limited bus drivers right now but they have doubled up on all of their abilities to ride so maybe it's because children are having to ride the bus longer the parents just decided to come get them but my personal belief is they don't want them riding the school bus with COVID. Okay. All right, oh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman I would say ma'am uh, I'm completely with you but I suggest you turn around and look at a couple of people here you have the city manager in the corner back there. Um, you have uh, the Honorable uh, Mr. Mondahan 
right here who's a council member, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Mr. Young, who's a council member, and behind him you have the Honorable Ms. Marchman, who doesn't want to be uh, uh, recognized, I don't think. <laughs> Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but those are the, the, those are the people, in my opinion, who should be able to give you some real assistance here. We can agree with you, but we can't do anything. I wasn't sure who to take it to. I'll come to the city council meeting then in two weeks. C and city present council it meeting, yes, ma'am, and. Yes, ma and, uh, and I look forward to you seeing these folks. Great. Thank you so much for hearing me. Thank you. Any other public comments? I'm over here. Uh, Dwayne Cannon, Faye Land, 34 Connors Road. I am a, uh, fatal I'm an accident investigator. I do accident reconstruction for insurance companies and law firms all over the South. I uh, travel from Virginia to Miami and everywhere else working on these fatality and serious injury accidents. Um, I'm looking at this at a different view than Brenda's looking at it. And the reason I'm saying it because these people are here and I would like for them to hear. I work for some attorneys that sometimes uh, push the limit. I see an accident occurring, head on collision. And, and let me say this before I get there. I have talked to the Honorable Chief uh, of the Police of Villarica. He is an honorable man who I have ultimate respect for. His hands are tied. Uh, I've talked to him about it, and he's in a position of rocking a hard place like we talked about earlier. If he goes and makes people move, they just move the line because they got to pick up their kids. And so he's in a hard place. Uh, either a police officer needs to be working traffic at that location to help cars around, or this needs to be built. I see a head-on collision occurring, and the chief actually, when I talked to him about it, didn't disagree, bringing the city into a and the county into a lawsuit because it is a preventable thing and it's not being prevented and it's kind of being not by you but uh, it, it's just not being handled so in respect of loving the city even though i live just outside it we try to do our business in the city because we love the city we love what has been going on in this city with with the pavilion out here and just all the different activities that the city does but uh, I, I just want you to understand that it's not just that we're worried about getting home. There is a potential hazard of someone getting injured, a child or mother or somebody there, and the city and the county both being brought into a lawsuit because nothing has been done. Uh, um, and, and I thank you all so very much for listening to me and, and, and bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I see no one else rising to the occasion, so I'll close public comments and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this. So moved. <laughs> I'll be seconded. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs> yeah, it certainly was. You, uh, you forgot to recognize uh, Sarah.